Hey guys and welcome to a new video here on Flow Shop. My name is Joseph. In today's video, it's a behind the scenes of the recreation of Rihanna's Loud album cover. So I'm going to walk you through the editing process. So I'm going to show you everything I did step by step from Capture One all the way through to Photoshop. But before that, I'm going to show you a little behind the scenes just to show you like the way we shot it, the way we were trying to match the pose. I initially started with the beauty dish, but I changed to the seven inch reflector dish or cone with a grid on it, just so I could control the exact position of the light. If you're new and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. I have a lot more content coming. Leave a like if you think she looks like Rihanna and enjoy the rest of the video. All right, welcome to my screen. And this is the finished work. This is what I've done. This is the original Rihanna work. And this is where the image started from. So this is not really the raw. I've made some adjustments. If I just press Alt and hide it, you can see this is the raw import. And then Capture One has added its own ICC profiles and I sucked all the colors out of it. If you want to know how I did this, I have other videos where I've walked through basically doing this exact same thing. So I'm going to link it in the card or in the description so you can check it out. So you have the full understanding of what I did. So I'm gonna go straight into Photoshop and because after this, that's what I did. I imported the image into Photoshop and then I started doing all of the work. So if I open Photoshop right now, this is the complete work. I'm gonna hide everything and then we're gonna start talking about the layers. So this very first layer named BG layer, obviously is the import from Capture One straight here. And the first thing I did was just to angle the image a little bit so the rotation is quite similar to um, Rihanna's own. The next thing I noticed was that she was facing the right, but then Rihanna was facing the left in the image. So if I show you, this is the raw, this is where she's facing. She's, her face is towards the right or camera right, but in Rihanna's own, she's facing towards the left. And in my own, I also turned her so she faces towards the left. So the first thing I did after importing into Photoshop was to flip the image. So flipping it, now she's facing the correct direction that I want. The next thing I did was do a base edit. Now you can see there's a lot of change in here, but I'm gonna open the folder so we see exactly what I did. So opening the folder, again, you can see this, uh, <laughs> there's a folder here called first set. And this is because I did this over a period. I didn't do this in one sitting. So some of the stuff I did in day one, others I had to take my time just to, you know, analyze the image a little bit more and spend more time crafting it or shaping it to look really, really close to Rihanna's album cover. So inside the very first set, if I scroll all the way down, I'm going to hide everything. And then we're going to start talking about the layers one after the other. So the first thing is the hair crop fix. So obviously the space around, if I hide the background layer, you can see these areas are transparent and that's because the image wasn't big enough to fill those areas when I rotated the image. So the next thing I did was to make sure that I fill those areas with hair. So I just used a clone stamp tool and then just fill those gaps because I knew I could go over them just to refine it a little bit more. But this stage was not to refine it. This was just to fill in the empty areas. So you'd see I have another folder called hair fill ins and inside that I have drawn in some hairs, copied hair from like some of the other images and place it over this image just to, you know, crop the image again towards Rihanna's image. So the next thing I did was to remove certain things from the shoulder area. So if I just do it before and after, you can see I got rid of some of the hair strands and then I got rid of this part right there. And I use a clone stamp tool and the healing brush. I mix them up to, you know, get rid of those parts that I didn't want. So the next thing I did was use the liquify just to shape her jaw and the lips area plus the cheek 
just a little bit add more definition i'm doing these things again not because i want to alter the way she looks it's just because i want to move the image to a certain direction it's just because i want to increase the resemblance between um lisa and rihanna don't get me wrong she looks like rihanna but because of the album cover we wanted the similarities to be really really close that's why i did some of these tweaks the next thing i did was to rotate the lip and that's exactly what i did so if i zoom into the mouth area a little bit you can see that I copied this area right here, flipped it and then masked it in. So it blends really, really well. If I make the mask visible, you see this is the painting I did just so it blends in with the rest of the mouth rather nicely. The next thing is the teeth line. So when I did that, I had to get rid of the teeth line, this existing one. So I just painted it in a little bit. So the next thing I did was to use a healing brush and the clone stamp tool to get rid of some spots and also to shape her eyebrow just to move it again towards Rihanna's direction. Because if I show you again, um, this is how Rihanna's eyebrow looked. See how full hers looked. So obviously I had to shape it in the final image to look like Rihanna's just a little bit. So, so that's what I did in this in this step. And then getting rid of some of the um, blemishes on her eyelashes and then removing some of the hair strands on her face. This is called the barren hair. So the reason why I did that was because the hair was making the image look flat. We didn't have enough shadows in there and you know we are supposed to color the shadows and make it look a little bit more blue or purple or whatever the color is. So I needed to increase the darkness, you know, just to make hair also pop a little bit more. So now I did a lot of healing now just like removing the little blemishes that she has on her face and also doing what I call the lip fix. The makeup artist did a really good job trying to paint the lips but then there's only so much you can do <laughs> in real life so I just you know use Photoshop to enhance it and then just you know fill in and shape the lips a little bit more. This is everything inside the base edit so if I just fit to screen and do before and after of the base edit you can see already we've been able to shape the image towards um, Rihanna's um, album cover really really nicely the next thing that stood up to me was the inner lip and you can see the lipstick didn't get in there so I needed to fix it so I used the curves adjustment and then masked it in so if I press alt and click on my mask you can see there's a painting that I did but then if I go into the curves you'd see exactly what I did so inside the RGB which is the main curve the white one I dragged it down just to increase contrast so if I lift it up you can see we've been able to color it but the depth of the color isn't accurate so I just darken it down a little bit till I got to the point where it matched so inside the red for example I boosted the red a lot the green I just boosted it up a little bit and then the blues also I pulled it down ever so slightly and everything combined gives me the exact matching of the color inside the lips and so it makes it look fuller and well done. I call this extra healing so I went further again like I said I wasn't doing this in one sitting so sometimes I go and come and then I, I see new things and then I want to fix them so this is the extra healing that I did also removing a little bit of the hair um, just around here and then removing some of the spots on her face. Again, she doesn't have too many blemishes. I was just trying to even out the textures and things like that. If you don't know how I do frequency separation, I have a video entirely dedicated to frequency separation. So I'm going to put it in the card. You can check that out. Inside frequency separation, so I even out the tones and then just blending in some of the texture just to make everything look smooth and even. But then the majority of the change was done inside Dodge and Bend. So when I turn it on, you'd see that we did a lot of Dodge and Bend. And this is where the shape and form of her face, the structure actually comes out, the 3D look. So if I go into my dodge and burn, you can see I have one dodge layer and then two burn layers. So if I quickly hide them and then show you how they, what they do. So the dodge layer actually removes all of the darker areas that don't need to exist. And that flattens out the image. That makes it smooth. It, like all the transitions are really, really even at this point. And then what I did with the burn was also just to add a little bit more depth because the dodging took away the depth and the structure or the form of the image. So adding this just brings the shape back into the image. The next thing I did was also burn eyelashes and just add a little bit of definition to the nose. It's there, it's really tiny. If I just make the VR mask visible, you can see. So this is the nose and I darken inside the nostrils a little bit, including the eyelashes. And that combined just gives me this. So this is a before and after of that. So if I close the dodge and burn group and do a before and after, you can see we added a lot more structure and definition to the image at this point. The image was lacking a little bit of contrast, so I just created an S curve. So if I go in there, you can see it's a very, very slight S curve, and I bumped up the highlights a little bit. And the next thing I did was just to paint in some fake texture. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see there's 
if, let me just go in further. You can't really see it at this point. I hope you can. I hope you can see it. But you see, this is without a fake texture, and this is with the fake texture. It's just adding a little bit of texture because I took that away inside frequency separation and then during some of the earlier healing that I did. The face and the shoulder and neck area were varying in tone. So what I did next was to sample the color and then just painting over the areas that I wanted to match. So I set that layer to color, and then I sampled the good skin color that I wanted and then just brushed over the areas that were lacking in color and saturation and I pulled the opacity down a little bit just so everything blends in. The next layer is called Highlight Plus and that just boosts the existing highlights a little bit. So what I did was I painted white on that particular layer. So what I did was just to boost the highlights a little bit, I painted with white on there. So if I change it from normal, from soft light to normal, you can see that it's just a white paint that is over there, painted it exactly where the highlights are already existing and I just changed the opacity from normal to soft light just to boost the highlights a little bit and I dropped the opacity down to about 38%. So if I go to 100% and then if I go back to normal, you can see clearly that this is how it looks like and then changing it to soft light and then reducing the opacity to about 35% just blends it in really, really nicely. If I zoom into the eyelash area, you can see before and after. So I just use a healing brush tool just to heal certain areas on the eyelashes, um, just to, you know, blend everything in because some of the white um, reflected parts from the light, I felt were distracting. So I needed to tone them down. So I use a healing brush just to heal it. So here's a before and after on the left side as well. We're making progress right here. <laughs> Over here, when I turn on the hair color change, you can see because the lips and the hair were not matching, I needed to move the hair a little bit more to a reddish tone because looking at Rihanna's own, it's more pinkish, but then it matches the lips really, really well. And I couldn't really match. Um, I didn't want to go like an extra mile to match the hair and the lips and then move it towards Rihanna's hair color because one, her skin tone is a bit different from Rihanna's. I just wanted the hair color that's really going to complement her skin and I felt this really, really worked well. Here, I removed all of the hair strands on her shoulder right there, her shoulder neck area. I removed all of the hair strands with a healing brush and we're going to move on to the color grid. So at this point I felt the image was already where I wanted. It looked good, everything popped out really well. And the next thing I had to do was now, you know, tie everything in with the color grid. So if I turn on the color grid, you can see this is where majority of the color shifting happens. And I'm gonna open the layer and then show you exactly what I did. So if I turn off these first two selective color layers, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. So this is called general hue. So I believe this layer just does majority of the heavy lifting. This is where the major shifts in the hue occurred. So if I just click on the selective layer, you can see inside the reds, if I start from the reds, you can see I shifted it by minus 28, added a bit of magenta, pull down the yellows inside the yellows. What I did was also pull down cyan, pull down magenta and pull down a lot of yellow because I wanted to brown the skin a little bit. Then I went into the whites and what I did was I boosted the cyan in the whites and then I boosted the yellows a bit in the whites as well. When I go into neutrals, I pull down cyan, I boosted magenta, brought down yellows. And then when I go into the blacks, this is where I pulled down a lot of the yellows. And that was the only thing that I did in this layer. So if I just do like, so this is it without pulling out the yellows. And this is how it looks like when I pull down the yellows. Without the yellows and by pulling down the yellows, you can see that I'm adding a lot of blue into the shadows. So this is where the majority, of, if I go extreme, <laughs> this isn't what we want. We just wanted a color that looks really, really close to Rihanna's. And I think somewhere around 48 really, really works well. The next thing I did was the skin tone plus warm. So I noticed that after I shifted the hue, the general hue, her skin was looking too white and pale to me. So I needed to add a little bit more life to it by warming it up. I created a new selective adjustment layer and inside there, I warmed up the skin a little bit. So if I go into um, red, for example, you can see I've boosted the magenta and boosted the yellow. And inside the yellows, again, I boosted the yellows like a lot all the way to 100% and then I added a little bit of magenta so like plus 19 because already you know skin tones exist in the reds and in the yellow so adjusting those really really helped nicely by warming up the skin and you can see everything looks really really organic at this point. Alright the next thing I did was also to take away the whites in the highlights a little bit so if I turn on that adjustment layer it's really really subtle but what I did was if I go into the whites, for example, you can see that I pull down the cyan, which is going to add a little bit more red, pull down magenta, which is going to make a little bit more green, and then I increase the yellow 
by taking away the blues and so that's warming up the highlights a little bit so if i close this and then do it before and after of the group you can see that this is before the color grade and this is after the color grade and you can see we did a lot of changes just using one tool which is a selective color adjustment tool all right the next thing i did was to add noise you know just to tie everything in so if i just do it before and after the noise it's really really subtle but it exists maybe zoom in a little bit let's look at the shadow area so here's the before you can see it looks digital but adding the noise just makes it look a little bit more organic and that's what i was going for all right so the next thing i did was to export the image just like this without the font the loud font and then the next thing i did was also just typing the loud font just to tie everything in and this brings me to the end of the walkthrough of the retouching process i hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah just keep looking out for more content from this channel if you haven't subscribed if you're new here do hit the subscribe button click the bell icon to be notified anytime i drop a new video thank you for taking the time to join i wish you guys a merry christmas i am supposed to say it personally to you but i mean this is my last video for the year 2019 i look forward to a very very successful and blissful 2020 for each and every one of us here i hope we grow i hope we develop our skill even more and i hope we learn together grow together get bigger as a community and you know I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, everyone.